Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I guess this session is um, what I'm going to show you is how you can run the CLI for Microsoft 365 in um, in Docker. So a little bit about me. My name is Gary Trinder. I'm a solutions architect in the UK. I work for a gold partner called CPS. Uh, I'm also part of the PMP team and one of the uh, maintainers of the uh, CLI for Microsoft 365. Uh, just find my GitHub profile and you'll be able to find where I am on the internet. So CLI for Microsoft 365, so you may have heard of it, don't really maybe know what it is, but essentially it's a cross-platform tool that uh, allows you to manage all different services in Microsoft 365. You can run on uh, basically any shell is, is what we're, we're achieving here completely uh, across the board. If you want to use Bash, if you want to use PowerShell, you can use the, the CLI. So uh, just to kind of start, of, well, how has this all come about? Why are we even talking about this thing called Docker uh, and CLI for Microsoft 365? Well, as part of the, uh, the, I guess, the project, we like to get feedback from people, and we did get some feedback, which was great. So we have GitHub discussions, and we had some feedback to say, wouldn't it be great if actually you could bundle the CLI using Docker, um, so that basically it makes it easy for people to uh, to be able to download, use it, and it, it was an interesting interesting concept. We'd not considered it, so we had a, a really good discussion uh, in the GitHub discussions, and we kind of agreed. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll do it. So it sounds pretty good. So we decided we're going to build this out in the open, completely shipped it. So, you know, there we are from the time that we actually agreed um, from the uh, suggestion by uh, Alexander um, who put that forward. We raised the issue and then we actually released it uh, in a few months. And I thought that was pretty good for us to turn that around because it was something that was pretty new. So what what is Docker? Why, why have we even done this? So Docker allows us to effectively build and package the CLI with all of its dependencies, everything that it needs to run, give a, a mechanism to ship that out to people, um, then allow you to run that on your machine, on your servers, on your, your local machine, um, or even in kind of like DevOps um, agents uh, in Azure DevOps. Um, so Docker helps you build, ship your application out, and then just run it so that you as an end uh, user, consumer of, of, of that application, you don't have to worry about installing ev anything because we ship everything um, that, that you need. So that first part, the, the build part is, is, is a Docker image. So this is a Docker file. This represents our image, which is our bundle, um, which basically allows us to define an operating system. It allows us to find um, some some environment variables, create users in there, and actually run some uh, kind of like post installation scripts as well. So one of the things with the CLI, because we can run everywhere, we can run in Bash and we can run in PowerShell. We have to handle the uh, the peculiarities, if you like, the setup of of working in those uh, different shells. So this allows us to do that for you, whereas previously you'd have to kind of install and then go through and, uh, and, and configure things yourself. So what is in our image? Well, we've got Linux in there. So we're using Alpine Linux, which is if you kind of come across Ubuntu, think of Ubuntu, but very, very, very small. It basically just gives us everything that we need from the Linux side uh, to run the, the CLI. We bundle Node.js in there with uh, the, um, the the CLI, so you don't need Node installed on your machine. You don't need to worry about, am I running the right version of Node? Because we've provided it for you. Uh, and alongside Node, you get NPM with that. We've also bundled PowerShell in the image, so you can use PowerShell and PowerShell uh, 7. So if you're on a, a machine that's running PowerShell 5 um, and you don't want to install PowerShell 7, uh, we can provide that, that, that for you. We've got uh, Bash in there as well. That comes with, with Linux. Um, and what we also do is we actually configure the auto completion for you as well. So with CLIs, if you have used the Azure CLI, doing the uh, kind of the setting up autocomplete is kind of like a post step that you've got to do. It can be a bit tricky depending on which shell you're using. So again, we've provided that in, in the image. So how are we gonna ship this to you? Well, we take our images and we push them up to uh, Docker Hub. So if you're using NPM, 
it's like a, a package manager, but for Docker images. Um, we publish a new version every time we release. So every time there's a new beta version of the uh, CLI, every time there's a new uh, monthly release, a new version of our image uh, is available for you to use. And the other side of it, the Docker engine, this is something that you'd install on your machine, and this would allow you to then actually pull down those images and execute them on, on your machine. So you're pulling down all the dependencies. It creates an isolated environment on your machine. So again, if you've got other versions of Node installed already, you don't have to worry about them conflicting, changing uh, different versions to be able to, to use it. You'll use the version that we supply you with, which is great for us because that means that we can target a, a specific version uh, using this. Um, we don't, And then you don't have to worry about, have I got the right version? Do I need to update all those kinds? things so to get started there's there is a dependency still you need to install docker so if you go to the uh, the, the docker website there's uh, loads of uh, instructions in there it's really easy to get set up on windows that's all you need to do just install um, the docker desktop and that installs the the engine for you so once you've done that you're basically ready uh, to uh, to pull down this image and start using the CLI. So I'm going to jump into the demo. So I've got Docker running on my machine. Uh, so this is kind of like the Docker desktop. Um, so a container is basically a running instance of an image. Um, I've not got anything running at the moment. I don't have any images download. It's, it's completely empty. Uh, if I go into PowerShell, I can start to uh, run commands, use the Docker CLI to, uh, to basically you know, instruct Docker to, uh, to, to basically install things. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use this command, so docker run. And these switches, I'll go through what they mean in a second, but I can give the name of the image and also the version that I want to run. So all of the different versions there, they're appended at the end as tags after the colon. So, you know, if I wanted the, the, the beta version, I could just type next in there. But what we're going to do is we're going to run the, the latest. 365, there we go. So what this is doing now, this is going to Docker Hub it's picking out the image and it's downloading it. And it downloads it in layers. So a Docker image is layered as an operating system, a user account, um, basically all the steps that, that were in that Docker file before. So it allows us to separate things out and it allows us to, you know, if there's a new image that you want to download, say the, the, the next version, it will just swap out the image that's changed. So you don't have to download everything again. So what this has done, this is, executed the image so this is now a running container and you can see i am actually in this um in in this container i am in linux effectively and i'm in a bash command uh, if i run mc m365 you can see that we have the cli that is actually running in there so we know that we have node installed and we have uh, npm installed as well now, what we can do is we can also switch to PowerShell really quite easily. So now we've just jumped across and we've kind of been in a shell inside a shell. So if now I want to write some PowerShell commands, I can as well, which is really nice, easy way of being able to just interact with um, with with the CLI. I'm just going to exit out of this. So when I exit out of this container, um, there is um, I'll come back to this in a second and I'll explain it. Um, if I exit out of this, it's going to exit out of PowerShell. I'm going to exit out of Bash. It stops the container completely from, from running. And that is the RM switch at the beginning. It basically says when you've stopped the, the session, just close it down. So that means that basically anything that was done inside that, uh, that container is, is just gone. Uh, that that instance has now disappeared. It's, it's freed up other resources on your machine. Now, if I didn't want to go into Bash and just go into PowerShell, I can add the the shell at the end of uh, of what I want to launch into. So, I've already got this image installed. I want to go straight to PowerShell. It's going to go straight in. Doesn't have to download it again. It's already there. 
it's given me my new container and I can start to use the, the CLI. So I've got M365 here, there's the commands. And one of the things which I mentioned is you've now got autocomplete. So I can then tab and I can see all the different options, which is something which from a CLI point of view, we, we do miss. Um, I'm conscious that I am quickly running out of time. So that's a very quick way of how to get started. If you want more information, this is all documented on the CLI docs. We're going into lots more detail about how you can pass in environment variables, um, how, can, how you can run scripts that are on your host machine. Um, because the Docker container is completely isolated, it can't talk to your host machine. So if you want to run scripts in there, there, there are ways of doing that, and, and that is, is documented. Um, if you're really interested in using this in DevOps, um, so maybe you're in uh, Azure DevOps, what I would suggest is there's a great article by uh, Yannick Reitmans, who was uh, very kind to help us out with uh, delivering these Docker images. Um, he was able to test these images in Azure DevOps. There were a few things that we needed to configure to get it to work in there. Definitely check that out if you're interested in using that um, in, in your DevOps pipelines. Um, and like I said, right at the very beginning, this all came about because of feedback. So we would absolutely love your feedback, whether it's on this, whether it's an idea you've got. Please come to the discussions on the repo, create a new discussion. Let's have a chat and let's see where we, where we can go with it. And thank you very much. Excellent, excellent stuff. Thank you, Gary, on that one. Really, really cool stuff. I love the shell in the shell uh, reference as well.